How can we find out what happens to insects when they enter the stomach of a carnivorous plant? And we're going to take a look at what we found and you will understand that carnivorous plants are not like these monsters as they're presented to us, but rather a great example of mutualistic adaptation. We decided to try and solve the riddle of nutrition for carnivorous plants and we're going to look into the stomach because it is known that for example, the Saracenia purpurea, or the pitcher plant, can easily digest a small salamander or a tadpole or a frog. But how do they manage it? Let's do an experiment. I have the Saracenia pitcher plant in a vase, and it has not been fed for more than a month, and I think it's very hungry. It's late autumn outside, and it's not very easy to catch insects, but I managed to catch several wood lice or isopods and a couple of earthworms in a compost pile. Just remember this particular pitcher leaf, it differs from other leaves in the bush. It is the largest and has the largest fan or the largest skirt. The water level is somewhere a little less than half the height of the jug. I will gently give him the wood lice and an earthworm with tweezers and the rest I will distribute amongst the other leaves. I'm going to leave it for about 10 days and we're going to see what happens. I gave the wood lice together with the worm, not only because it is easier for me to catch them at the end of November, but also because it has chitin. And this chitin is in the shell of the isopod wood lice that stimulates the release of digestive enzymes such as protease and hydrolase that convert proteins into amino acids from which the plant gets the missing nitrogen and phosphorus. In addition, wood lice or isopods are kept like pets in terrariums and are very useful for them. So if the isopod manages to escape from the jug of the pitcher, which I deeply doubt would happen, nothing bad will happen, as well as with the earthworm. 10 days have passed, and you remember this leaf? I'm going to cut it off carefully. It is not harmful for the whole plant because time to time, old leaves of perennial Saracenia die off naturally and the young will replace them. So nothing will happen to this plant. I cut the leaf open and so far I don't see anything but only clean water, no remains of wood lice, nothing, which is strange, but only 10 days have passed. It is unlikely that everything has already dissolved. There are some worms that look like mosquito larvae this is Wyomia smilli, a non-biting mosquito that lives in Saracenia pupuria plants. Where did it come from? I purchased this plant seven months ago and it has always been in the house and has never been outside. So most likely this larvae were already there the entire time together with the mosquito too. Because the life of the larvae from hatching to turning into mosquito is about 20 days. This fact is an example of a symbiotic relationship or commensalism. Why does the predatory plant not eat the mosquito larvae? And not only them, but we also see the larvae of Novi flies. It turns out that in the process of evolution, these larvae and the pitcher have adapted to live together. So where did the remnants of wood lice and the earthworm go? I cut the plant further and I found it in the narrowest part of the leaf, everything that remains of the food that I gave the plant 10 days ago. I can sense an unpleasant odor associated with the decomposition process. Somewhere, half of the biomass of the earthworm and the isopod has already dissolved, but still the legs and half decayed chitinous shell remained. Not bad in 10 days. Everything looks like half digested food, and it turns out that this carnivorous plant can be fed only once a month or two. There are also the larvae of mosquitoes and flies, which play an important role in the diet of this predator. So how can this be? Yes, the fact is that in addition to the roommates visible to the eye, invisible lodgers also live in the Saracenia, the variety of which has about 165 species. These non-biting mosquitoes and flies are responsible for this diversity, well-being, and the number. They are protists, rotifers, amoebas, nematodes, water mites, that feed on decaying debris and on each other. And this fact plays an important role in the decomposition of trapped predator, prey, and the conversion of proteins into nitrogen and phosphorus available for this plant, as well as trace elements. 
So when I'm trying to understand all of these interconnections, my brain starts to boil. How can you imagine these forces of nature, all of this put together into one perfect mechanism? Just think about it. The plant lives in a swamp floating on sphagnum bog islands on very poor nutrient substrates. And what it does is it folds its leaf into a pitcher in which rainwater accumulates. Water means life. And now it is necessary to find someone who will establish this life in there. And this is where the mosquitoes and the flies come in. It is they who populate it, but not without a reward, of course. The plant becomes a shelter, a nursery for their children or their larvae, where they can develop safely without the fear of predators. Although their parents, the mosquitoes themselves, become prey for the pitcher. But why doesn't the pitcher feed on them? It can dissolve the larvae with its gastric enzyme, but nothing happens because there is a unique balance. Imagine, sarracenia raises the pH and the acidity in the stomach to such a level that sustains life for these lodgers and allows them to exist safely without being harmed. In addition, they all help the plant together in the process of digesting these victims and they provide adequate nutrition. The carnivorous plant is a small copy of the complex world in which we live in. Imagine what would happen if just one link in this established chain breaks. What will happen then? Evolution will have to turn on again and the plant will have to adapt to a new situation or to a new diet. Our nature itself knows the answer to this, but we are only given what we can to study and we have to protect it with our power. So you see these nematodes that live in the soil and water and play an important role in the biosystem. The predatory pitcher nematodes eat pests and their larvae and bring benefits to the entire community. And this ringed worm aliosoma, a relative of the earthworm with bright orange dots, feeds on the dead remains and provides the same benefits to freshwater as an earthworm does in the soil. And by the way, it can be kept in aquariums and terrariums for years. And these are rotifers, the rotifer phylum rotifera. Rotifers also feed on bacteria and they act as a filter by filtering the water through itself, which is why the water in the jug from above is absolutely clean, transparent, and odorless. Although at the very bottom of the sarcenia, food is decomposed and digested as evidenced by the corresponding bacterial odor. Look at the diversity that we see with the help of a microscope. We see water mites, many protozoa such as flagellates, these oval fast moving ones and ciliates. It is they who help enrich with nitrogen containing compounds, participating in the decomposition of complex organic substances to similar ones available for the plant. We think that a carnivorous plant is some kind of predatory monster just devouring unfortunate insects, but in fact, it is a very, very complex biosystem full of life and a lot of mysterious facts.